Hello everybody, welcome to the sound test room. Today we're going to take a look at Drumagog 5, uh, working inside Aurea, because I couldn't find any any really good videos for this. Um, so we're going to go from scratch, okay, so... First of all, before we before we start, Drumagog 5, Drumagog, um, what it is not is a drum machine. It's an IAP that you buy inside um, Aurea. It's a port from the desktop version as well. And also, you need the desktop version if you want to make uh, Drumagog files um, inside Drumagog by adding waves and stuff. I'll get to that in a second. We don't need to worry about that. So, <coughs> first of all, this is how we're going to start. Drumagog works by replacing drums, so it'll replace a kick, snare, toms, hi-hats and stuff. Now in the Aurea version of Drumagog you don't get uh, any hi-hats and things, but that doesn't matter. Um, but you do get like uh, quite a few toms and snares and, and uh, uh, kicks and things like that. So anyway, well, it works by, like I said, replacing, works by replacing drums. Uh, on on a on a drum track, so you've got like say five tracks, so you might have a kick, snare, um, some hi hats and stuff, and you can replace your original files with those files from uh, from Drumagog. So anyway, let's get going first, and you'll get you'll get an idea of how it works the further we go into it. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to go to DM one. Uh, this is a this is a great great way to do this because otherwise you're 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 building your uh, your your track unless you're recording in a recording studio with a mixer with a drum pattern and everything. Now I've just, I've, I've I've put this little thing together already to save time. Okay, and you can see I've I've, I've unhighlighted these these uh, few tracks here, but it doesn't make any difference to this. So there's the, there's the thing anyway. So what you do when you've built your pattern. Um, remember what what tracks you've used sort of things okay but it, like i said it doesn't matter whether these are highlighted or, or or not highlighted so anyway once you've built your once you've built your song sort of thing and go to song mode here and i've got this little thing running and that, this is all it does it goes uh, pattern one for three then pattern two then pattern three and it's just called more gog so then what you want to do then is when you're happy with that now the important thing is it for the excess, you don't need to worry about the sound because we're going to change the sounds in Drumagog. Okay, so what we want to be doing here is uh, export. <clears throat> now, when we export, we want to export our song if we have more than one pattern playing in a song. Okay, and we want to mix that. We can leave it on wave, and we want to mix down to separate tracks. Now, when we press go, it will what will it will do is it will start to render every single track. Okay. Now the thing is, uh, it takes ages, so I'm not going to do that. I've already done it, but that's what you do. But it will render. It will render all of these. Okay. So once you've done that, you can. The only way you can export that is to Dropbox. So once you've done this and uh, you've rendered it and everything, you need to go to your Dropbox uh, account. Okay. So like I said, I did this earlier. And apps and uh, DM1. Now you'll see I've only got the three things that were working there, the kick, the snare, and the cymbal. What it will do is it'll render the rest of them as well so they're all there. So just to save space and time, make a note of what you've got and get rid of it, delete them. So that all we've got now is the snare, the kick, and the wave. But you see we've got three separate files. So that's a, that's a cool thing. So <clears throat> now we've got that. We don't need to worry about um, Dropbox anymore. So we can just... Uh, close that and we don't need to worry about dm1 because we've built our pattern we just need to go and locate audio share so once we get into audio share here you can see that we're going to dropbox import so it'll go to our dropbox obviously then we can open apps and then dm1 and you'll see that there are our three our three things are there okay so we've got this one this one and this one okay so we're going to import all of those so we've selected them see we're just going to import all of them and uh, select all files okay so and then we can import hmm 
Mm-hmm. So there you go. So there is our Morgog kick here. And there's our snare. And there's our um our symbols. So <coughs> Now what we've got now is those two. So what we want to do is import, uh, let's see, we've selected our symbols, so we need to import that one into, actually let's import away our, our kick drum first because that makes more sense. And we need to get that into Aurea. So we just select open in Aurea. Okay, and then let's do our snare next. And let's do the same. So if you had more, if you had tom tracks and stuff like that, you could, you could do that, import them as well, and uh, our symbol. There we go, open in Aurea. Okay, so that's fine. So next thing we want to do is create a new project, and uh, we'll call this project. Um, we'll call this one more Gog. More, more drumagog. Okay, let me turn. So that's done. So if you're still in ever. So what we're going to do now is we're going to import audio. Now you will see here that uh, on in our audio, in our audio section here, we have our our morgog symbol, our morgog kick, and our morgog snare. Now. Like I said, this is where it becomes important that you remember what you're calling your file sort of thing so you can locate it easily in your project. So we can just select those three there and you'll see that it's, it, it'll bring up this little thing here. Okay, so we just need to prep. We don't need to start setting tracks and stuff. But it'll do, it'll, we'll put them on separate tracks and that's the important thing here. So we just press OK and it imports the files and there they are. Now, <clears throat> if we go and have a look what we've got there, this is our this is our thing. I would think that's our symbol, and then our kick and our snin. We can arrange these any way we like, you know, but it doesn't really matter for the point of this. So hopefully now, and theoretically, this should play just as it was in DM1. Okay. So let's just mix down our I had a little bit. So at this point now we might want to set our our our, our looping points while we're working with it, okay? So we want to take this the 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 thing back to there and just hit that there and that sets locator one and then we can move our thing to where we want it to end, which would be around about there. And we can just set locator two, and then we can put loop on, so it will loop backwards and forwards for us. Anyway, so what we're going to do now is we're going to start by replacing the kick drum. So <clears throat> let's go to our mixer here, and uh, we know our kick drum is on track two. So let's just hit effects, and let's go to the first insert there, and find drumagog. Now this is what it looks like. I don't know if you can see it all, but if I well, let's just play it anyway. It's got a CR78 on it now, and you see this thing is the sensitivity. If if it's below the line, if it's above it, it won't pick it up. Now this is good if you if you have got a live recording situation where you've got bleed going on into the other microphones you know you can set the sensitivity really well okay and there's other ways you can adjust you can have it in stealth mode auto align and stuff like that but that's something you need to get into later so these are the kicks that come with it so we can just play change our our kicks to suit well let's just see uh, acoustic kicks now that's a nice one now you see these multi samples here because this is a GOG file, you'll get multi samples of the same kick drum played with different velocities and stuff like that. Now that's really cool. And then you have some adjustments you can make to, on some of the files you have some adjustments you can make to the ambience and stuff. 
Ja. Okay, so you get the point of that there. Now, if I go to, for instance, if I say, well, I don't particularly like any of the kicks that they put in as, as part of the program, because there aren't that many, look. Um, if you go to Documents folder, any wave file that you have actually put in extra, you see there's the there's the, uh, the 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 ones that we imported there. So if you've got another, if you've got another, you know, like a bass drum from Cubasis or something like that, that you might want to use, uh, you can drop that. Just just drop it in, and it'll be there. So for instance, I did this one earlier, and I think there's a it says Cubasis bass drum wave, which is much nicer. I think, for this particular thing anyway. So let's just open that in Aurea. Now let's go to our <coughs> documents folder again and you see Cubasis. Now I've just selected that now so the this Cubasis will, should play uh, where we had just had our, our other our other one so producing clip in there because we're gonna just the mix. Right. So we've got our bass drum there. So I'm quite happy with that. So to save on CPU, just stop that there a sec. To save on CPU, I'm not going to make any more adjustments, but I could put more effects in and stuff. I'm just going to hit freeze. I'm just going to freeze that track. Because, you know, um, these effects and things take up a lot of processing power. So let's move over now to our snare. Okay, so let's just select effects for this. And let's play. And let's go to Drumagog again. And I downloaded a, 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 a another snare earlier. Which was a nice Yamaha snare. snare now to have more I want that snare that we've changed now that Yamaha GOG file I want that snare to have a bit more impact and stuff in fact I'm gonna I'm gonna put some reverb on it for the start off okay you think that's too much right well it is actually I'm gonna make it a bit louder as well but what I'm gonna add now is Pro G gate
Anyway, so guys. You get the basic drift at that how that works. So you have to you have to mess around with it if you wanted a nice gated snare or you know you can play around with the different settings. But basically that's how it works. You can import your own wave files into Drummer Gog. Or you can, there are some free ones on the on GOG files on the actual internet. But basically, it's a drum replacement program. Uh, there's lots of different features, and it works really well. And uh, it's it's great fun to play with. I basically hope that gives you a basic idea of how you basically start to get your get your separate tracks. But like I said, it has to be separate tracks. That's why I use the M1, because that will export all your stuff separately. But you can, like I said, you can record your drum hits in, and then, and then change them in Drummagog. All right, guys, I'll see you later.